This is Southern Cross News with Joe Palmer. Good evening, everyone. Two people are dead following a horrific head-on crash on a notorious stretch of road at Sanford on Hobart's eastern outskirts. The incident happened around 5.30 yesterday afternoon, with police now calling for witnesses as part of their investigation. Police say the road was damp but not slippery at the time of the crash on a straight stretch of causeway linking Lauderdale and Sanford. The 48-year-old female passenger from Dodgers Ferry in this 1999 model Subaru Outback was killed instantly. The driver, a 45-year-old man from South Arm, dying at the scene soon after. It appears at this stage that uh, the Subaru may have drifted to the gravel verge and perhaps overcorrected uh, in an attempt to try and maintain control of the vehicle and has subsequently lost control uh, travelling to the incorrect side of the road into the path of the Ford Ranger. The driver of the late model Ranger lucky to escape serious injury. The Ford Ranger driver, he was the sole occupant of that vehicle. He was conveyed to hospital uh, for assessment. Uh, he's OK. Uh, he was a 31-year-old male from Howrah. The crash cutting off access to the South Arm Peninsula for several hours while police investigated and cleared the scene. They'd like to speak with as many people as possible to help ascertain exactly what happened. We ask that anyone that did witness the crash that hasn't yet come forward and spoken to police, that they come forward as soon as possible. The two deaths take the state's 2017 road toll to eight, ten fewer than at the same time last year. Andrew McCarthy, Southern Cross News. Police are also investigating a tragic accident in Badger's Head yesterday where a three-year-old boy was run over and killed. The child's father was reversing when it's believed the boy walked behind the car. A report is being prepared for the coroner. Tasmania police will soon have an extra set of eyes when out on the beat. Cameras worn on the body will be rolled out to officers over the next four years to keep police and the public accountable. They're discreet and lightweight, but these cameras pack a punch when it comes to protecting police. Research has shown that uh, people behave differently about when they know they're being recorded. Southern Cross News has an exclusive look at these new cameras. They produce high quality images, even in low light. All frontline officers will be given one. Police officers want the, uh, the camera to protect them uh, against assaults. Which are known to happen during family violence call-outs or in alcohol fuelled hotspots. The technology is already used in other states. Police are developing guidelines for when and how they should be used here. It needs to be managed, obviously, and managed by strong policies and strong backup for people out in the field. These body-worn cameras catch every move, so it's likely this evidence will lead to more guilty pleas, saving time and money in the courts. There's a study by the University of Cambridge that found in their trial period that there was a 90% reduction in complaints against police uh, due to the use of the body camera. It gives the raw emotion and uh, every, everybody's comments are recorded at the time. So. Uh, the courts find it hard to refute that sort of evidence. The state government is spending three and a half million dollars on the devices. The first will be rolled out later this year. Tom Johnson, Southern Cross News. A man found guilty in February of murdering his wife and shooting her friend will now be representing himself in a $2.5 million civil hearing. Josephine Ramos Cooper is suing Klaus Dieter Newbert for the acclaimed psychological and physical damage she suffered from the shooting in Newtown two years ago. A Tasmanian man guilty of the shooting murder of his wife, Olga Newbert, and causing grievous bodily harm to her friend, Josephine Ramos Cooper, on May 2015, has appeared in the Supreme Court in Hobart. 74-year-old Klaus Dieter Newbert will now be representing himself, his lawyer walking off the job this morning. Lawyer James McConville withdraws from the case after Justice Estcourt granted him leave. He told Justice Estcourt after speaking with his client over the weekend it was clear his service was no longer wanted. Mrs Cooper is seeking damages, claiming the injury to her right hand was severe as a result of the shooting, impacting on her physically and psychologically. 
Josephine's husband, Roger Cooper, gave evidence today, telling the court when he arrived at the Royal Hobart Hospital after the shooting incident, he found his wife hysterical and says she was a complete mess. He says to this day she has not gone back to the Newtown Road, where the incident happened as she is severely frightened, to the point where they always drive an alternative route. Mr Cooper adding his wife had flashbacks of the incident two to three times a week after the shooting and still has nightmares. Last week he claimed she woke up screaming, adding she always has to have someone at home with her and that she used to run the household but is now incapable of basic tasks. The hearing continues. Talia Higgins, Southern Cross News. A man has appeared in the magistrate's court in Hobart this morning on multiple charges, including arson, unlawfully setting fire to property, dishonesty, acquiring a financial advantage and cruelty to animals. Mark Gordon Bird has pleaded not guilty to all charges. The matter has been adjourned until July 10. A newly formed health lobby group says the Royal Hobart Hospital's emergency department is overflowing with patients once again. Jim Frank says the situation is the worst he's seen in his 21 years as a cancer patient. He says at 7.30 this morning, all emergency beds were full, including resuscitation bays, and 17 patients were stranded in waiting rooms for 12 hours. I don't want to see people dying. I'm not trying to scare people. This is not politics. It's not doctors crying wolf. It's actually happening. In a statement, Health Minister Michael Ferguson says he recognises there's a long way to go to address bed pressures and says there will be additional health funds in next week's budget. The state government is tonight remaining tight-lipped on whether funding will be allocated in the upcoming budget to upgrade a section of the Bass Highway. Staff at a Latrobe fuel station say if roadworks aren't started soon, the stretch could prove fatal. Staff at the Latrobe Caltech say the situation is at breaking point. Day after day they hear and see near misses on this stretch of the Bass Highway cars pulling up trying to enter the, or exit the service station and, and with the amount of traffic on the road now the, the B-doubles and semi-trailers have got no room to go around the cars that are trying to access the station. Ian and his wife started a petition last year for change and gathered almost 3,000 signatures in support. They want to see a separate turning lane added. Basically you need a, a slip lane to go in, it's marked clearly that people can get into out of the, to enter the service station. State and federal Labor members were out in force today calling on the Tasmanian government to fund the upgrade, saying money could have been allocated for the work in last week's federal budget. It's quite a simple thing to write a letter, to make representations on behalf of your community to ensure that we can keep the roads safe. And it's a great shame that Reen Hitting hasn't had the time to do that on behalf of La Trobe. The state government says all highways are kept under constant consideration but remains tight-lipped on if or when work will be committed to. In regards to this, um, we're aware of the, the problem and uh, we'll be moving to fix it uh, uh, in the near future. Meanwhile, Labor's David Llewellyn is the second party member in as many days to announce he won't be contesting his seat at the next election. I don't intend to stand at the next election. Um, but I do intend to serve out the remaining part of uh, this uh, uh, election period. It comes after Tasmania's first female Premier, Lara Giddings, stood down from public life yesterday. Jessica Moran, Southern Cross News. It was a lucky escape for a North Hobart family this morning after fire broke out in an upstairs bedroom. With the family evacuated from the unit safely and unharmed, firefighters moved in using breathing apparatus to extinguish the blaze. Investigators say the cause of the fire was accidental and have praised the residents for having a working smoke alarm installed. Damage is estimated at $50,000. International scientists have just left Bell Bay for a major study into some of the world's least known habitats. The team begins by heading to Tasmania's east coast, where researchers will try to identify new marine species.
Deep sea creatures, look out. The RV investigator is heading to some of the world's least explored areas to find out what's living below the surface. We don't know the animals. Uh, we don't know how they're going. Over the next month, scientists will go up to four kilometres underwater at seven locations, mapping the seafloor and collecting samples of animals. The creatures that live down there tend to be quite exotic. It's so deep, these creatures never see light. Scientists will deploy the largest fishing net ever used in the area to catch them. So what these animals do is they just kind of hover there, wait for a little bit of prey to come along, like a shrimp or something, and then they've got the fangs and they've got the teeth and they've got the spines to really grab onto these animals. Experts say animals in these areas have been around for some 40 million years, but so far only a handful have been identified. The trip will also test the capabilities of the RV investigator itself. We had to get special buoys uh, to go down that deep. So as you get deeper into the water, uh, at 4,000 metres, it's about 400 times the pressure that we encounter here at the surface. And so we needed buoys that wouldn't simply crush under that pressure. Tom Johnson, Southern Cross News. More funding has been announced to complete repair work at the Beaconsfield mine, which started to collapse last year. State and federal governments today boosting funds to $1.5 million, confident it will be open before the next tourist season. In October last year, the West Tamar Council's worst fears were realised. The mine was collapsing. A 50-metre sinkhole was threatening to topple the head frame. Since then, repairs have been carried out, but the mine isn't out of the woods just yet. We did have one technical glitch um, last week that put us back a couple of days, but we are still on track to... Um, Within the eight, eight to nine weeks, we're hoping that the mine shaft, the eight and a half thousand tonnes that has to go into the shaft, will have gone in. From here, the shaft needs to be stabilised permanently and filled. Remediation work also needs to be carried out for the mine yard in front of the shaft. The fill will continue to be running through the conveyor behind me until such time as we get to around about 180 metres, where we'll install a concrete plug. Once that plug's gone in, we continue to fill up to 100 metres, and at 100 metres there's a thing called the king set, which is a concrete rim that's been plugged into the rock, which is solid. Then it can be open to the public. State and federal governments today committing to another $125,000 each to finish the works. This site is an incredibly important part of the local community and a draw card for, for tourists, having drawn in over 44,000 visitors in the last 12 months alone. This additional money will ensure that the job can get done. Jessica Moran, Southern Cross News. A new service set to tackle the issue of elderly abuse has been launched in Tasmania. It's focusing on all forms, including emotional, physical, financial and sexual abuse. Legal Aid says family violence and restraint orders have almost tripled in the last three years for clients over 65. We've consistently received calls from, the community, from community members older people themselves, families, friends, through the helpline to seek that information and support. It's about increasing people's awareness and empowering themselves um, and to be able to contact and you understand what organisations are offering what services and being able to go to them. It's hoping to encourage elderly people to call for help and be referred easily to the right service. The search is on for the lucky person who will soon be $2.6 million richer. A life-changing ticket for Saturday Super Draw was sold at the Newstead News Agency, but so far no one has come forward to collect it. The valuable Division 1 ticket wasn't registered to a TATS card, so it's anyone's guess as to who has it stashed away. Still waiting on the lucky winner to come forward, so fingers crossed. We've well, got people coming in. Who is it? Do you know who, who the winner is and all that? Yeah. Throughout Australia, there were eight entries that each won the First Division prize. Now let's take a look at business and finance with thanks to TASPLAN, your local super fund. The Australian market has closed flat as gains from the banks offset falls from the miners on disappointing Chinese economic data. The ASX 200 index has risen by 1.5 points. A short time ago, the Australian dollar was trading at 74.14 US cents and 107.68 New Zealand cents. 
Hobart City Demons will have little time to celebrate last weekend's one-point thriller against Clarence with their upcoming clash against Launceston shaping up as the match of the round. Demons coach Kane Richter says it will be a massive game for his ever-improving club as they look to cement their place as the competition's giant killers. Richter says his squad enjoys a trip across the Derwent to the wide open spaces of Blunston Arena and it showed on the weekend. But across the, the board, you know, from the forwards right through to the defence, uh, every area played well. Um, but again, it, it, the big part for me was the resilience at the end. With Launceston also flying high after a thumping win on the road against the Tigers, this week's game at Windsor Park is emerging as the match of the round. Richter's only injury worry is Jaden Charlton's rolled ankle, but he expects big man Charlie White back from a corked thigh. The next task, working out how to shut down the Blues' biggest stars. Sonny Whiting is in some good form, um, kicking the bag on the weekend, so uh, he's definitely one player that we've got to watch up forward, and, and obviously Sammy Lonigan's quality, and uh, you know, Donahue floats around and, uh, and takes some grabs, so they've definitely got some key players and they've got some belief amongst the group. North Launceston and Glenorchy may find themselves minus key players after Taylor Whitford was reported for striking and Rhys Mott went in the book for rough conduct. They'll learn their fate at the tribunal tomorrow. The incident the only blemish for the Bombers and Tom Couch says his team will take plenty of confidence out of the gritty three goal win. There's always two or three things that we're trying to, trying to um, focus on every week and it was really good to put those to the test on the weekend. Like they're a really good side. They really um, you know, put us under the pump there for, for quite large parts of the match. So, yeah, we got a lot out of that. North Launceston will go in red-hot favourites when they meet the Tigers at Utah Stadium on Saturday. Andrew McCarthy, Southern Cross News. The votes are in for the RACT Insurance Player of the Year in the TSL after the seventh round, with Ryan Matthews judged best of field for Hobart City Demons. Thor Boskett from Lauderdale saluted the judges against Devonport. North's Tom Couch's solid year continues taking the three votes against Glenorchy and Launceston's Stuart Williams awarded the three votes against the Tigers. To the leaderboard and Zach Burt is in front with nine votes, Dylan Fife and Ryan Matthews snapping at Zach's heels with eight votes. Good evening. A high pressure system caused cloudy conditions about the state today with showers at King Island and about the southeast. Hobart reached a top of 12 degrees. It was 15 in Launceston, 16 in Burnie, which was the state's high, and 15 degrees in Devonport. Minus three was the overnight low at Liawini, warming up to seven degrees today. It was 15 at Lowhead, Friendly Beaches and Strawn, 14 at Mariah Island, and 13 degrees at King Island and Medina. Looking to the satellite now, we can see low-level cloud over Victoria and Tasmania with a bright spiral cloud band in the Tasman Sea and a patchy circular band of low to mid-level cloud near southwestern Western Australia. On the close-up, extensive low cloud about the east, south and west with isolated cloud elsewhere. Now let's take a look ahead at tomorrow's chart. There's a high just to the southeast of Tasmania, connected by a ridge through Victoria to another high in northwest New South Wales. And that complex low in the bite has a cold front extending into South Australia. South to southeasterly winds reaching 20 knots in the northeast, and east to northeasterly winds in the far northwest, swells to three metres in the west and south. There's a frost warning for the central, north midlands, east coast and upper Derwent Valley. A possible light shower for Hobart tomorrow, looking at a top of 14 degrees, 13 with a light shower or two for Adventure Bay, a sunny day with morning frost for Taralea. Launceston and Devonport, both mostly sunny with a top of 15, 16 degrees for Bridport. Burnie, partly cloudy and 15, the same for Marawa, Strawn, 14. Partly cloudy for St Helens, 15 degrees, Swansea 15, Whitemark 16. Looking ahead to Wednesday now, areas of morning fog with showers about the northwest extending across the north in the afternoon. Fine elsewhere. Thursday, morning fog and frost with early showers about the south coast and fine elsewhere. And Friday, areas of fog and frost with late showers about the Bass Strait Islands, otherwise mostly fine around the state. And now let's take a look around the country tomorrow. A sunny day for Brisbane, looking at a top of 26. Sydney, 21 degrees and sunny. And morning fog for Melbourne with a top of 17. 
And right now in Hobart, it's 10 degrees and cloudy. Launceston, 9 and clear. Devonport, 10 and partly cloudy. That's all the weather. Thanks, Joe. Beautiful. Thanks so much for that. That's all from us for now. See you a bit later. Bye-bye.